everyone, this is Nikki from the design team and today I'm here with a fun Spellbinders card. We are going to be looking at the new stitched numbers and what I love about these is that they give a very bold look on your card but they don't take a whole lot of stitching so you can really make cards quicker than other things. We're also going to look at some color coordinating. Um, the stitching, adding embellishments, and adding some die cuts to this card to make it extra special. I think these numbers pair really well with this bold, be bold, lowercase alphabet. It's small enough that you can kind of put it in on the card, and you'll see with my card, I'm going to do the word sweet, and then I'm going to use the number 16, and it just looks cute together. You can also do something like happy and then put the number for the birthday. It's just a really nice way to personalize the card. Of course, what would a Spellbinders card be without some beautiful blooms? So we're going to use the four petal floral to add a little bit of blooms and more bling behind our card. Because we're going to be doing so much die cutting, I'm going to use colored cardstock today, and this is the color palette that I'm going to use. I really love purples, teals, and corals together. It just pre creates a really fun card, so we'll use those for them today. The stitch numbers dies come with two sets, so it's got an outline and it's got the stitching part. So I'm going to do a lighter color for the stitching part, this light purple, and then I'm going to do darker as my outline. So when stitching, I would recommend cutting at least two pieces of the stitching part out so that you've got a little bit more strength and you're not going to rip your piece with the stitching. These, um, the weight of this paper is around 80 pounds, so I did two. I really probably could have done three or four if I wanted to make it extra sturdy, but I was just careful with my thread. So it just kind of depends on how hard you pull on that thread. While you're cutting, you can go ahead and cut out your letters as well. I did light color, sweet, um, it's going to be the top, kind of like my numbers, and then the dark is going to be the shadow. I did decide to do two layers again for the letters. Um, I did two layers of the light color and one layer of the shadow. When stitching, I'm using a tapestry or tapestry needle. It's a size 22 and it's not super sharp, so I'm not sticking my fingers. You could possibly tie knots behind this, but you're going to see it through the front. So I tend to use a little piece of double sided adhesive and tape down the tail of my strings. So I'm trying to keep my thread pretty long so I can do most of this, but I'm using my double sided adhesive instead of a knot behind this to secure it. So it takes a little bit of doing with these numbers. I'm sure you could do it some other way if you wanted to. You could even create a, just a sticky back of this where you run it through something and you've got a double sided adhesive on the whole back of the number. That would be fine. But I tend to use these little bitty pieces of double sided adhesive to hold my thread down. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple loops of this and then I'll speed it up. So you've got your holes. Now I'm going to go through the middle and come back out through the next hole. So this, there's lots of different patterns of stitching you could do, but I like this design. It kind of looks like a flower. So I'm gonna stitch from the outside into the center, from the outside into the center, so right through here, back down through center, and I'm gonna do that all the way around this little florette. And I'm gonna keep all of mine the same on both numbers. So this is the process that I do. And I am pulling on it to make sure it stays. The thread that I'm using is actually a more satiny thread. And one of the reasons I chose this purple is because I really wanted to use this thread. It just looks nice. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. And, um, it really gives us a nice, nice look. So the other reason I like going through that center is because you can put an embellishment on the center and it really does look like a flower. Um, and since I'm making this as a sweet 16 and I'm putting flowers all around this number, I think that just gives it a really nice look. So I'm gonna go all around this here and continue working on it. And you can see the back of it is quite a mess, but don't worry about that. If you're um, not tearing your tape exactly right, which I tore some of mine a little bit long just to make sure I've got my stitching done, then I can go back and trim that so you can't see it from behind. Like when I put this face forward, I'm gonna trim all those little white pieces and extra pieces of adhesive and it's going to look perfectly fine. And look how impressive this looks. It just looks so cool. So now let's get ready um, with the back of the card, cutting out the die cuts for it, and we'll put this together. I'm gonna show you the colors and how I use them briefly. 
So when I have a color palette like this, I like to hold everything together. So I know I want to put some branches. I decided I definitely want this dark teal as my background. And I'm looking at my two other teals to decide what color I do the branches in. I decided to go with the medium tone. And then let's look at the coral shades as well. So we've got three shades of coral. And I decided to do the dark and the mid-tone, but not the super light. I just feel like this is a dark um, base and it's going to look better with those darker colors. So these flowers have multiple layers to them. The little tiny four petal don't, I don't know if they're supposed to sit on top of each other like this, but since the other ones had layers, I decided to make these, I would stick them together and just make it a little thicker flower. I just liked how that looked. So now it's all about getting my flowers stuck together and also flower arranging, how I want this to look on the actual thing. So um, I do a lot of messing with that, putting all my flowers together. I really like this bloom a lot. It's just a two layer bloom right here, but it looks really nice because it can kind of tilt down and look like it's supposed to look like that. Do you see it on the lower left? So I'm putting all my pieces together. I end up not using the largest of the flowers. I thought about using that, but it was just so much bigger than everything else. I decided I wanted to keep things scale down a little bit. The other thing this set includes are leave cutouts. So I just cut out tons of leaves and see how it gives them that extra little definition. You don't have to put them on there. The little vine would look fine, but it's just a cool extra layer. So I did add the leaves to all the area, took my flowers back off, went on and got the leaves down, and then we'll place all of our flowers. Next, I'm going to place all the flowers and I'm just going to kind of show you how I do this because I want to make it pretty, not necessarily symmetrical, but to make sense. So I'm doing two large flowers um, and two of the ones that almost look like roses right here. They're both a different size and I'm spreading those out. And then I'm just going to kind of create a focal point with my small ones. So I do mess around with this quite a bit just to see what looks balanced. But when I decide to go with my small flowers, I was planning to only do three and I ended up deciding that I would do a couple more, five. I really like to have those, those odd numbers and it really made the vine look more balanced. So this makes my total number of flowers nine, which I really like to have that odd number. And one thing, I did not cover up every single little stem on here. You could add more than this if you wanted to. You see there's two that aren't taken up. That's perfectly fine. You could put the flowers in a different place. No worries. It's just what, the way you like it. So next I decided to add some jewels to the center. Like I said, this makes it look a little bit like a flower, so I love to do that. And then once I had done these on my stitching, I realized I love these jewels and I would like to put some on the flowers. So I ended up doing the middle of some of the flowers and even around the flowers just to give it a little extra bling. I feel like every 16 year old girl needs extra bling on her card. <laughs> so that's why I did that. So I'm gonna show you that and then I'm gonna show you how I added some white highlights to make these numbers and letters and flowers just stand out just a little bit more. Okay, when I'm doing a really dark colored card like this, I love using a white gel pen and I always use a little scrap piece of paper before I take my gel pen to the project and make sure that my ink is flowing well. So this is a jelly roll pen. It's a bold um, number 10 and I just love adding highlights. I try to keep them somewhat consistent, but also it's fine to just add dots and dashes and curves, anything you want to that you, the way you like your letters. I just really love this. And I ended up doing this on the flowers as well. It doesn't show up quite as much on the flowers because they are a lighter color, but I still think it makes them kind of pop out from the background, which if you're not doing any ink blending or anything on your flowers, it's kind of nice to add that extra little detail. So I just go around. Sometimes I do a couple dots. Sometimes I do a dash. Sometimes I do a dash and a dot. I just kind of play with it and do whatever I'm feeling at the moment. So here's how all those white dots look. I did go around and decide to add some extra bling around this flower arrangement because, you know, what card doesn't need extra bling? I just thought that was awesome. So I added those and then I wanted to let you know that if you haven't done it yet, it really does help if you hit the like and subscribe button on the Scrapbook Pal channel. I will list the products used in the description of this video. I'll also have a blog post on my site if you need any further information. So I enjoyed 
being here with you. I hope that you had a great time and I hope you love this card. If you haven't tried stitching yet, you definitely need to try it. And Scrapbook Pal does have a lot of different stitching guys, especially from Spellbinders. They tend to have the most. So try it out. It looks so amazing. I wish you could see this card in person. You would love it.